Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to recreate this full-size painting that I have hanging in my bedroom that I did quite a few years ago. And we're going to paint it in miniature so that we can put it inside a dollhouse. So let's learn how to paint. So the first of all, the canvas that I'm using is actually a real canvas that comes in a canvas pad. Um, and these are the little uh, fine scale brushes that I'm going to be using today. And basically what I'm going to do is, is uh, I'm just going to use regular crafters paint. So this is just the cheap stuff that you can get at Michael's or I guess up here in the States at Hobby Lobby or at the dollar store. So first of all, I just put down a little bit of uh, acrylic paint really thinned out with water. I don't know why I, um, I put it so thin. And then I'm just going to cover it in kind of a creamy beige color. So uh, no rhyme or reason to it. I just want it to be not a completely the same color. I just want to have it uh, be modeled I guess is the best word for it so um, I'm just going to add a little bit more black here make it a little richer gray color and then I'm just going to go in and kind of swirl it around. as you can see there's just no right or wrong way to do this I'm just kind of trying to um, swirl around some color to kind of block it in and uh, make it kind of modeled looking just adding a little bit more black here. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to take this very fine little brush here and I'm going to go right into the black. Maybe add a little tiny bit more white to it, but I want it quite a darker charcoal gray. And we're just going to we're just going to go in and we're just going to kind of put some trees in the background. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just kind of uh, faintly drawing in trees. And I'm doing it over the wet background because I want it to just kind of, kind of just um, blend in, I guess is the best way to describe it. So um, I'm just putting in vague impressions of trees in the background. As you can see, I'm just kind of drawing in a branch here and there and a trunk here and there and just kind of going to fill the entire background with these little trees. This is probably the longest part of the actual process is putting these little trees in the background. But they really do make the final product look like there's a forest behind the trees. So they are important to do. Um, as you can see here, I'm three quarters of the way done. And uh, this has taken the most amount of time out of all of the parts of this particular project. So again, you know, um, it doesn't really matter what the shape of the branches are because you're going to barely notice them. It's just going to give the impression that there's a little forest in the background. So here we are working kind of on the last couple of trees here. And there's quite a glare off of the paint uh, with my light there. So, but you'll see after it's dried, it is very uniform. It looks like it's way darker on the far right hand side, but uh, that's actually not the case. So, yeah, so they kind of look like little little trees that are in the middle of the forest that have lost all of their leaves. So there you go. We're all done. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now it's dried. Can get a better idea of the far left hand side. Now there isn't the glare on it. So now I'm going to take some cream colored paint and I'm going to paint in some tree branches. So these will be our birch trees. 
So the reason why I'm using cream colored paint and not white is because we need to use the white for highlights and you'll see in a bit. So right now I'm just kind of blocking in some tree trunks and uh, I want to kind of have them a little bit evenly spaced because these are quite small paintings. So I want to be able to squeeze in as many as we possibly can. And as you can see here, we're just going to add a little extra branch there. There you go. So the tree trunks are looking pretty good. We're about halfway done here. Yeah, that's quite satisfying. And again, this is the kind of painting that anybody can do. It's not really that difficult. As you can see, it's just nice and relaxing and uh, it's really quite a lot of fun. I think I like doing it sm the smaller version of this better than I enjoyed uh, doing the larger version. So, and again, this cream color, if you don't have cream color, I just added a little tiny bit of uh, brown to my white paint to develop this color. <coughs> so there you go, that's all done. So now we gotta decide which direction is the light coming from? And we're gonna have to add some white to it. And we're also gonna have to add some black into it to make them look like birch trees. So by looking at it, I'm thinking that the light should be coming in from the right hand side. So if it were coming in from the left hand side, you'd put all the highlights on the left. But for us, the light's coming from the right. So we're just gonna paint a little bit of white, and this is pure white, on the right side of each and every one of these tree trunks. So you can paint it straight up and down, or you can paint it from left to right, but it's just the right side of the tree that's going to have the highlights on it. So you can see here, and I mean, it's difficult for you to see it on camera, but in person, it really does make a huge difference having this bright white on the right-hand side. It just makes the trees themselves look way more three-dimensional. It doesn't look as flat when you put that highlight in. So now we're gonna go in with the black and I'm gonna first of all just do the left hand side of each tree so basically I'm just putting little tiny lines and trying not to make them too evenly spaced some are darker than others some are shorter than others and uh, as you can see here I'm going to do more on the left hand side of the tree than I would do on the right hand side of the tree just because of the light source. So here you go. So I'm working just mainly on the left side of the tree. I think I put a knot there on the first tree on the far left. But uh, yeah, so you're just kind of scribbling in a little bit of lines on each one of the trees. And that makes it look like the peeling bark of the birch tree. Birch trees are so beautiful, they really are. So there you go. I finished putting in all the lines and uh, it's all dry now. So now it's time for us to work on some frames. So these are again, uh, coffee stir sticks. And as you can see here, I'm uh, just kind of figuring out, well, how big do these little frames have to be? I'd like to try and get at least four or five paintings out of this strip of paintings. So um, I've taken out my guillotine cutters and I'm cutting the coffee stir sticks. Now you can see I'm not even bothering to miter them. And the reason why is um, after they're glued together, I'm going to glue some old lace on top of them and that will hide the fact that it's not mitered. So one frame I'm going to miter, the other two I'm not even going to bother. 
So, because once the lace is glued on, you will never, never in a million years know that uh, it wasn't mitered. So there you go. Now the frames are glued together and I'm painting them black. Uh, the two frames on the left are the ones that have the lace glued onto them. And the one on the right has been mitered. So uh, once again, I'm gonna take out my trusty uh, tacky glue, which I use in almost every project that I do. And I'm gonna figure out where these frames go and I'm gonna glue them on. So just make sure that you use a generous amount of glue on this and figure out where it looks good. And there you go. Now I'm gluing on the second one. Just putting a generous amount of glue on it. There we go. And figuring out a good place to put it. And there's our second painting. I find this to be the easiest way to frame them. And again, I'm putting a generous amount of glue on frame number three. Should have maybe made some more frames. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like that one. That one's probably my favorite. I like the way the tree on the far left splits off. I guess the only thing that we're missing now is a little punch of color. So the original had these little bird houses hanging in the trees. So of course I have to add them to these little paintings as well. So I'm doing them with uh, two tones of red. They're so tiny, it's hard to capture on camera. So I've got the lighter color uh, red on the right side where the light is and the darker color is on the left side. So just kind of putting them in and then I'll go back and put a little tiny black dot right in the center of each birdhouse. And there you go. So these have had a good while to dry. So now I'm just taking the scissors out and trimming them up. see here that uh, they fit perfectly <laughs> so there's no right or wrong way to do it when you're making a frame and just gluing it on like this so and there's still enough painting left to be able to frame a fourth one so that's our finished product I'm actually quite uh, quite happy with it so um, I'd like to go in when I use lace on frames, I like to go in and highlight it with a gold marker. You can see here a little bit closer. So that kind of shows where the, where the lace is. Makes it kind of look like an antique frame. It's quite a good technique. And not having to miter and having the lace hide those corners is just excellent. So, and it really looks nice on the wall once it's hung up, so. And there you go, that's the finished product. The one on the bottom left is the one where I mitered the frame. The other two I just simply covered in lace. So I'm really quite pleased with the way they turned out. And you can see, it was pretty easy. I'm sure you guys can create one too. Well, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment uh, behind. That helps my channel. And share this with your friends. Take care.